Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Well, friends, welcome back. Happy day. I am throwing all kinds of things in the slow cooker as always. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you three large family slow cooker dinners that are frugal and easy and a mama can just throw it all together and walk away. One has a few extra steps, but the first two right now, they're throw and go. So we are doing meatball stroganoff. We're also doing chicken Caesar wraps. You can actually use the chicken Caesar in a variety of ways, but we're gonna make some healthy wraps out of it. And then we're going to do slow cooker shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie, I know for our friends across the pond, <laughs> always gets to be back and forth chatter in the comments because I'm using ground beef for my shepherd's pie. Technically, what I'm making is a cottage pie and you would use ground lamb to do a true shepherd's pie, but here in the backwoods of Virginia, it's all shepherd's pie. Okay, okay. So let me show you what we're doing to get this meatball stroganoff going and also this creamy chicken Caesar going. And then when I get back from church later today, I'll show you these and then we will make the slow cooker shepherd's pie. Yes and amen. Also, the detailed recipes for these large family slow cooker dinners will be linked down in the description below. I also have the Instant Pot version of these recipes for you as well. So next up, we are going to get our slow cooker meatball stroganoff going. The recipe is super easy, which is my favorite. We are going to use one family size, three pound bag of meatballs. Uh, we're only gonna need to put a cup of beef broth in this. We're gonna use two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. A little bit, half a teaspoon of black pepper, teaspoon of salt. Then we'll be using two teaspoons of ground mustard. In a perfect world, you could wash off an eight ounce pack of fresh mushrooms. I don't have any. Actually, there's another ingredient I don't have exactly. But we use our imagination around here because we like Anne of Green Gables, right? We, we are, are people of imagination. Anyway, I'm gonna pour this in too. It'll work out just fine. Can't have stroking off of that mushrooms. At the very last at the tail end after cooking on low for about four hours before i serve i'm going to separately do a 16 ounce bag of egg noodles if you notice these are not egg noodles we're pretending that they are mm -hmm. i only had one bag of extra wide egg noodles left and i used those for another recipe i filmed for you guys anyway we will use these, we'll be okay. So at the tail end, we're gonna mix in this cooked pack of noodles and we're gonna also mix in, again, very, very last before serving, a cup and a half of sour cream. So let's get these ingredients thrown in the slow cooker and put it on low for four hours. Now I filmed a video over for Large Family Table Community Membership and in that video, I did the Instant Pot version of the meatball stroganoff. Now with that, you put all your ingredients in the Instant Pot, including the noodles, and and you can cook it up that way and then you stir in your sour cream at the tail end. However, converting recipes back and forth, going from the Instant Pot, going to the slow cooker, especially when dealing with noodles, can get a little tricky. So for this one in particular and some others, I just like to add the noodles at the end. That works well. So here's meatballs. Now I also sprayed the bottom of my slow cooker because I just like to do that, never hurts. Now, these meatballs are going to release more liquid as they slow cook, and it's all gonna go together gloriously when you add in the noodles and the sour cream. I also, for this one, like to do a cup of the beef broth. In this case, now I'm not worried about the extra liquid that's with these mushrooms. It's only, this is only an eight ounce can. It's the equivalent of about two ounces of liquid at the most, maybe even only one. So I'm just gonna layer those mushrooms in there. Now again, you're gonna do two proper teaspoons. I'm gonna eyeball this because I'm just cooking at home in my kitchen. You will need two teaspoons of ground mustard, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, half a teaspoon, of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of pepper. I'm gonna take my wooden uh, spoon here in a minute. And we'll just gently stir all this in. And then a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just gonna gently stir these frozen meatballs around here for a minute. That's it. Lid on. 
I still got to plug it in. I had to pull my slow cooker over a little closer to get it on camera, but plug it in low, four hours. We'll see you a little later, meatball stroganoff. Next up, I'm gonna get going for you, the Caesar chicken. Again, we're gonna do this in wraps with some lettuce and tomatoes later today, but right now we need to dump in a pack of chicken breast, bottle of Caesar dressing, the equivalent of one lemon worth of lemon juice, also one cup of chicken broth. Then later this afternoon before we serve, we will also also mix in one cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. So here we go. Now we're just gonna put this lid on, let it slow cook for a long time and do its thing. Now with our Caesar chicken wraps that we're going to make, the chicken is done. I'm gonna take the lid off. I've already unplugged it. I'm gonna take my spatula here, break it up and mix it all up. Then I'm gonna let it cool a little bit and get it in my refrigerator. You wanna bring the temperature down though. Don't put it in your refrigerator when it's still very hot. And then we will serve it on our wraps with some lettuce and big tomatoes a little later. Let me tell you uh, a quick Jamerall realization fail that I had. I put my creamy Caesar dressing in this chicken this morning before we left to church. You can do that. However, I had bunch of kids and my husband in the van waiting for me. I was trying to get my recipes recorded for today and get them rolling and I was happy to at least have one done, right? This recipe, as I said, I have the Instant Pot and the Slow Cooker variations here. It produces a lot of liquid. Okay, so what I needed to do this morning, and you just make, you do it right, you'll get it, you do it right. We didn't need to put the dressing in this morning, okay? Everything else but the dressing. So we're gonna let it cool. I'm gonna pull the chicken out of the sauce, out of the broth and such that it cooked in all day. After it cools for a bit, then we will mix in the shredded Parmesan. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I have another bottle of creamy Caesar dressing <laughs> in the pantry. I think I do. I think it's gonna all be okay. So again, alert, alert, warning alert, save your dressing until later when you go to make your Caesar chicken for your wraps. It's not going to taste bad, it's not gonna hurt it, it's just the problem is, once you take your chicken out of the natural broth and lemon juice that it's cooked in all day, if you only have one bottle of creamy Caesar dressing because Jamerell told you to only get one bottle of it, you're not gonna be able to pull this together at the end and then you'll be sad and I'll be sad. So all that to say, where I put that dressing in this morning. Mama just wasn't thinking. Okay, so gonna pull this chicken now, let it cool off a bit, get it in the refrigerator, and later we will be adding the shredded Parmesan cheese and that bottle of Caesar dressing and do those wraps. Thanks for listening. So next up, I'm gonna get cooking slow cooker shepherd's pie. What you need is about three to four pounds of ground beef. I cooked three pounds of ground beef yesterday. I'm going to quickly saute about two chopped up onions and add in some garlic on the stove. Then we are going to mix that with the pre-cooked ground beef that I already got done. And my recipe calls for this is where, again, imagination comes in play. Two 16-ounce packages of frozen peas and carrots. Now, I've got a 16-ounce package of peas, and I've got a 32-ounce package of corn. So these frozen vegetables are easily interchangeable with a shepherd's pie. Use what you have on hand. That is me already making the best of it. We are going to get all of this cooking in the slow cooker, and then I'm going to make some homemade mashed potatoes that later we will put on top with some shredded cheese. Now, if you're short on time, and if you want to make this recipe even easier, you're going to have the ingredients in the slow cooker for a few hours, you can chop up your onions and just go ahead and mix them with your vegetables and with your ground beef, and they will definitely be softened and blended whenever the recipe is done cooking. But if you have five extra minutes, going ahead and sauteing your onions in olive oil beforehand, that's just a nice little extra touch. But I'm all about the mama sanity, so you do whatever. Whatever you gotta do that day, girl. Yep, do that. Okay, so now we're gonna take these over and get them going in about two tablespoons or so of olive oil. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is giving away two months of 
premium membership to the first 1,000 people who click the first link in the description box to help you explore your creativity. After that, it's only around $10 a month. On Skillshare, I've been enjoying the creative nonfiction course to write truth with style by Susan Orlean, who's a staff writer on The New Yorker. Her class is about an hour and 49 minutes. It goes over finding your topic, preparing for reporting, organizing your notes, the elements of a story, dialogue and quotes, description writing, conclusions, revision, just so many great topics when it comes to creative nonfiction. That's my little mama extra learning time that I'm enjoying right now with Skillshare. So in a perfect world, as I like to say, and depending on the size of your pan, like if I sauteed the onions in my deep dish cast iron skillet or my other big pan, you can go ahead and add your mixed vegetables and your ground beef, stir it all together in the pan. I didn't use that size pan today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just mix it all together in the slow cooker and then we are gonna cook it on high for three hours or you can cook it on low for six hours. How do you like this juggling, huh? I do need to spray the bottom of my slow cooker too. Yay! Just sent one of my happy helpers down to our pantry storage to get me a can of tomato paste. That's my ground beef from yesterday. I was trying to think ahead of what could I do to help myself today. I'm gonna stir this with my wooden spoon. Again, recipe calls for two 16 ounce packs, peas and carrots. I'm gonna make up the difference here. I'm doing peas and corn today. Well, don't think I'll use quite all the corn. I'll see how it looks once I get it stirred up. So I had a 12 ounce can of tomato paste brought up. Pretty big size can. Usually I have the smaller six ounce ones. Anyway, we only need about four ounces. So I'm going to eyeball this. Try to take about a third of it out. Good thing I cook for y'all just about every day because we'll use up the rest soon. So then we're gonna put in two teaspoons thyme leaves. And I'm gonna not give you a heart attack. I'm gonna measure. Oh, come on, come on, we can do it. Okay, we'll pour. Okay, we're gonna be mixing this up here in a moment. And then you can do two to four cups of beef broth, depending on how saucy you like your shepherd's pie. I'm doing four cups, and it will all work out well in the end. We will also do two tablespoons of cornstarch. We'll get this going and then we will go ahead and make the homemade mashed potatoes for it. You can, of course, do mashed potatoes from the box. I won't tell nobody nothing. At the very end, you're gonna top this once it's done cooking with mashed potatoes and then a layer of shredded cheese. And you put the lid back on your slow cooker just long enough to melt your shredded cheese. So if you wanna do box mashed potatoes, you can totally do that if that's what you have. I put about two and a half pounds of potatoes in the slow cooker and just let them cook overnight. So this is all we're gonna do. Again, we're gonna have a nice thick layer of meat. You know I'm just gonna stuff this <laughs> at the end, but gonna get this cooking. I'm going to do high for three hours because I have a couple other recipes going for you and I want to finish them up and show them to you before mama needs to be in bed. Okay, I need to get these done. Also, I was just moving some stuff around in my baby kitchen, putting on a slow cooker away. I carried the crock that had the shepherd's pie in it over there and put it in my red slow cooker because that one was already plugged in, ready to go. You want to see my new fall flag? I know you do. Okay, cutest little thing. I saw this. This was in a box that I moved to put a slow cooker somewhere. Okay, yes and amen. It says welcome, and it's a little kitty with the scarf and the pumpkin, and look, kitty even has like its little pumpkin spice coffee latte, whatever little special, whatever coffee the kitty wants. So I wanna go and hang this out front, and I'll show you what I got for my birthday too while we're at it then we will make those mashed potatoes. So of course I got leaves in my garden, but look, we got our fall mums in full force. And I'm gonna hang this little flag up here, take down my summer flag. There we go, kitty flag, do your thing. How cute. I showed you in a recent grocery haul. Still gotta get all these wonderful spring bulbs that Costco had, get those planted here shortly. There's another plant that's just doing its thing. 
And then this is my fall flag. So it goes along with slow cooker dinners, uh-huh. But even though it's sunflowers, it's got pumpkins. It says welcome fall, so I can use that. And then for my birthday, which was earlier in August, we ordered these fun things, confession. I was gonna get a cow for my birthday, but I pulled a little muscle in my back. <laughs> and also, around that same time, we had just found out that we're expecting baby number nine. If that's news to you, I announced it. Go see the chatter over on Instagram. And I thought, I don't have to do a cow this summer. I'm gonna get some fun yard stuff for the fall instead. So here's some of Mama's birthday presents. So this fire pit just came a few days ago here in September, ordered it in August. And then we got a swing, nice little swing to go with our longtime swing we've had for 20 years. Then we got a nice fun hammock over here. So hopefully by next year I'll have flower pots and things going on over here, but slowly making a nice hangout. Hello, tall shadow. Nice fun hangout spot in the front yard. We find ourselves sitting here a lot. Travis is on his scoop, but also uh, super exciting. Mama ain't doing this now. I'm sure some of you saw my video where, you know, I power washed and all of that. Well, I'm not finishing doing everything on this house now. That was some of my early summer Jamerl energy. We've got our painting company friends coming tomorrow. They are gonna do all the trim and such. And I'm showing you this peak because super exciting. He's doing the cedar shake looking sighting for me that you know in my heart of hearts I've wanted painting all the other trim. It's gonna come together, getting all the doors painted. So tomorrow's the big day. And again, over on my Instagram, at Jamrell Stewart, I'll leave a link for you in the description below. You can look, cause I'll show a before and after picture for you. Well, cause mama's not firing all cylinders. I'm gonna take my butter out and just warm this for about 30 seconds or so. When you can, it's nice to work with warm and soften things when you're doing your mashed potatoes. Whenever you do your potatoes in the slow cooker, instant pot, or boil them on the stove, if you don't take the time to peel them first, which I rarely do, the skins will slip right off. My family does not mind the skins in the homemade mashed potatoes. Okay friends, all the goodies in the slow cookers are all done. We've got slow cooker shepherd's pie. We're gonna put the mashed potatoes and top with cheese, put the lid back on that for a few minutes. Then we're going to do the noodles, just finish cooking those and the cream cheese in with our meatball stroganoff. And of course friends, totally for the first time, we need to add a bottle of our creamy Caesar to our Caesar chicken. Uh -huh. <laughs> all the big wings and make our Caesar chicken wraps. Yum, so let's pull all this together. So I've got my pound of noodles we're gonna pour in. This is for the slow cooker meatball stroganoff and we're gonna do a cup and a half of sour cream. So here is a bowl of the meatball stroganoff. Here's the chicken that again, totally did not already get cooked with creamy Caesar. This works really great prepped ahead for lunches. Perfect thing with the school year going. And then you can sprinkle it with shredded Parmesan. And this is not gonna shock you. I don't have shredded Parmesan. You know, I do these recipe grocery pickup orders. I plan my recipes for the week and I shop for them. And with some of these, I thought I still had some of my ingredients on hand. But this just shows you in real life, you don't have shredded Parmesan, but you got a few little packs of mozzarella in your refrigerator that you need used up. Use those, you'll be okay. This is how I would serve up the Caesar chicken wraps. Now the Caesar chicken recipe is actually low carb and this is a low carb wrap if that's important to you. And then for kiddos, I've got carrots and I'm also gonna do some cucumber slices. And then here is slow cooker shepherd's pie, 
This is how it turned out, all beautiful, and shepherd's pie-y, and we will love it, and it will be so good. This is what Mama's having for dinner. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Remember, Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box to help you explore your creativity. After that, it's only around $10 a month.